uh, once again with another video in this video we are going to learn how to solve problem sum based on transportation under the method VAM and MODI so that's Vogel method and modified method okay uh, so this sum basically will contain a question which has an optimal solution okay so this is the very first type of sum under transportation under VAM and MODI that we're going to do that where the problem is optimal okay so let us see how to solve the sum when the problem given will be an optimal solution or the problem itself is an optimal problem okay so let us see how to solve the sum okay now let us see how to solve uh, the sum based on Vogel method also known as VAM along with Modi method as a modified uh, method okay to find the optimal solution so now the question will read the question once the question is given as uh, the BMS limited company has three factories and four warehouses so you can see it's given F1 F2 F3 and W1 W2 W3 and W4 they are giving you the supply and they are giving you the demand Find the IBFS that is nothing but initial uh, basic feasible solution and also find the optimal solution using Modi method for the following transportation. Okay, now let us see how we need to solve such kind of sum. Okay, now very first thing I'll write here number one. We are first finding the initial basic feasible solution by VAM method that is Vogel method okay so now uh, what we do here is we, we will divide this part in divide this line or this box in two parts they are given us warehouse and factories okay so I'll write your warehouse and I'll write here factory in warehouse we have W1, W2, W3 and W4 and in factory we have F1, F2 and F3 okay then we have supply given to us and we have demand And now whatever values have been given to us now, whatever values have been given to us in the question, what we'll do is that from the table in one corner, okay, in one right side corner, we will note down those values. So it is 42, 32, 50, 26 and supply you can write it as normally as 11 same way 34 36 28 46 that becomes 13 and we have 64 54 i'm just noting down whatever values are given in the question okay 36 82 and 19 and they have given us demand also the demand is 6 10 12 and 15 and the totals on both the sides are 43 each okay, so we have 43 of demand and 43 of supply okay so i've just noted on those values uh, which are there in the question okay whatever is there in the question just just noted it down now here this is very important now in order to start the solving the sum by VAM method we need something called as row penalties and column penalties okay row penalties and column penalties okay so uh, we'll just number it down so this is one this is two uh, we can have three four and up to five the sum doesn't go beyond five penalties okay so we have five row penalties and we'll have five four to five uh, column penalties okay now 
this is the most important how to start with the uh, vogel method okay how to use those values very important step 1 from your row from each row these are your rows these are your columns from each row like take it we are going to start with the first f1 row so from f1 which is the two lowest cost these are all your cost okay which is given to us find out the two lowest cost so i can see 32 and 26 The difference between the two lowest cost is nothing but the row penalty, and difference between same in a way in from the column also. The difference between the two row, uh, or you can say difference between the two cost is nothing but the penalty. Okay, so thirty-two and twenty-six are the two lowest ones. So the difference is six. Now here the difference, the two lowest is twenty-eight and thirty-four. So thirty-four minus twenty-eight is again six. uh from next it is 36 and 54 okay 34 50 uh, 54 minus 36 is 18 so we noted down as 18 all the rows are done now same way we'll start with the column side so in w1 the two lowest values are 34 and 42 so when you subtract we get the value as 8 next 30 uh 36 and 32 When you subtract, we get the value as four. The next row is twenty-eight and thirty-six. So thirty-six minus twenty-eight is eight. And lastly, the smallest twenty-six uh, and forty-six. The value is twenty. Okay. Now the rule is once once we get the row penalties and column penalties. search for the highest value check whichever is the highest value now the highest value is 20 okay the highest value is 20 so and it is in the column so we will have to go in this order we'll have to go as per the column now this column has been selected w4 now from w4 check which is the lowest cost the lowest cost is 26 so we will have to fulfill this particular column okay or this particular your box the demand is 15 now now let us see how we can set up the demand and supply the demand is 15 and the supply is 11 okay demand is 15 supply is 11 okay so now let us see how basically how we need to allocate this particular uh, you know table the this particular box so now the demand is 15 but the supply is only 11 so what we can do here is we can fulfill the entire supply the supply will get over demand will still not get over but we will be able to complete the entire supply so what we do here is okay now since the demand is 15 and supply is 11 i can complete the entire we, we can fulfill the entire supply so what i'll write here is entire 11 okay the so supply is over supply becomes zero okay and from demand out of 15 11 is used up so we still have four remaining because i've just shown it in red so it become easy to understand okay so now the moment we have done with this just say just look at this okay the supply has become zero the moment it, any any value from the dem, from the row of column anything becomes zero okay either the, the demand or the supply all the row you know all the penalties of that particular line will be done so i cannot have any more penalties in your row 1 chalo now we need to just repeat the step again for every penalty there will be one cost allocation okay so chalo we start now this this entire row is done so we'll start with the second row the two lowest value is 34 and uh, sorry 28 and 34 so the, uh, the difference is again 6 next is okay So uh, next two lowest is thirty six and fifty four. The difference is eighteen. So I'll note down eighteen. Same way from the column. Uh, the first column me the lowest value is uh, again thirty four and forty two. But 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 now look at this very carefully. Okay, since the su first supply was done, I mean I cannot use any of these values. Okay, so basically I can't use any of these values now because the entire thing is over. So I'll just put a cross there. So now these are the only two remaining now. So in the column, we have the second and the third value. So thirty sixty four minus thirty four is twenty. Sorry, it is thirty. 
36 minus 54 or 54 minus 36 is 18. 28 and 36 ka difference is 6 into 8 and 82 and 46 ka difference is 36. Okay. Row penalties and column penalties for the second are done. Now check which is the highest value from this. 36 is the highest value. Okay. Now, so we'll have to check this column. Check which is the lowest next cost. 46 is the lowest cost from the remaining. Demand is 4, supply is 13. So I can fulfill the entire demand. So I'll write here 4 demand. So demand is now 0. From 13, supply was 13. So from 13, 4 is gone. So 9 is still pending. Okay, so I've written that way. Uh, the moment now, see this demand is done. So this whole thing goes off and no more after this. Okay. No more column penalty for column number 4. Chalo. Now, since we have allocated, we repeat the step. Now, step number 3, again in the same order. Whatever is pending now. Okay? These 3 are pending. So, from these 3, whichever is the lowest. So, we have 34 and th uh, sorry, 28 and 34. So, again, 6 is the lowest value in the difference. Uh, from here, 36 and 54. Which is again 18 column wise. Again, we have 30 here, 54, and this is 18, and this is 8. Okay, so once we are done, again check which is the highest value. So while marking it is always the highest, then we have to look at the lowest cost and then allocate the cost, either demand and supply. So the lowest is now, the highest is 30 here. So here, this is 30, so I'll go this side. Now from here, which is the lowest cost? 34 is the lowest cost. Demand is 6. Supply is 9, so I can fulfill the entire demand of 6. So I wrote here 6. This is gone. So from 9, 6 is gone, 3 is still pending. Okay, this is demand has become so no more allocation in this also. Chalo, we start with the again the same thing. This is over. So now we have only this 36 and 28, which is 8. 3654 which is 18 okay from here the different now this is over so we only have these two so 54 minus 36 is 18 and 36 and 28 is 8 now check which is the highest value from your row and column now if you look carefully we have two parts here you have 18 here also and we have 18 here so now which one to select when once you have a common okay now check in which of the two in which of the two your highest allocation can be done okay the one which has the you know basically which has the uh, the lowest cost you can say now if i look from here 36 is the lowest and if i look at here also 36 is the lowest so in that case it doesn't actually really matter which side you will go even if i go from here i'll get the same value if i go from here i'll get the same value so what i'll do is i'll go from the column side first okay now in column the demand is 10 the lowest value is 36 and the supply is only 3 so what i can do here is from the 10 uh, 3 can be allocated here so your supply becomes 0 and your demand is 7 okay now, now since this is the last part okay because uh, we have only have uh, you know we see this is also done so this that's only one line and these are the two cells remaining so now your demand is 7 your supply is 19 so what i can do i can allocate this entire 7 here what will remain will be 12 and lastly there's only 12 demand here so i can allocate this entire 12 here and my demand will be, yeah, my supply becomes 0 and even my demand becomes 0 Okay, so with that, we were able to allocate all the costs, you know, we are able to allocate all the costs with the entire demand and supply being nullified. Once we complete that part, the next step is very important. We need to check for the rim condition. There is rim condition in the sense whether to check whether it is we need a dummy value or we don't need a dummy value. Okay, basically this is done for checking for 
degeneracy meaning if we need to allocate some dummy values or not okay so the formula which is we'll have to use is number of occupied cell should be equal to m plus n minus 1 number of occupied cells so 1 2 3 4 5 6 we got six values m is the you know the rows which were three columns of four minus one so three plus four seven minus one is six so both of them are equal six and six therefore there is no degeneracy okay meaning we don't have to add any dummy values to this okay now so once this is done we are done with the vamp part now we need to test for the optimality so a uh, second part now we'll start this will be testing for optimality now this is basically uh, we, are, we are trying to find the optimal solution using modi method okay this is basically our modi part okay so we will fill what we'll do is we'll note down this entire table as it is on look at this what we need okay i'll need warehouse i'll need w1 w2 w3 w4 supply f1 f2 f3 and demand as it is with the allocated uh, values okay so i'll just pause the video here note down those value and then we will start with the solving part okay now i have noted down the same table okay whatever table was here exactly same so now what we do whatever values were allocated we will note it down so this was 11 4 12 7 3 and 6 Okay, now you have to find two things under Modi method. We have to find something called as U and V. Okay, where we will be finding basically U1, U2, U3, U4, and here in V, we need V1, V2, V3, and V4. Okay, using the formula. Now we'll have to use the formula something called as cost is equal to u plus v. Okay, so based on this, uh, we'll have to you know fulfill the the entire table of u and v. So see, it is very simple. It is, it is very simple. Now, always remember u one will always be considered as zero. So you have to take u1 as 0 always now now only you have to go where there are allocated values now here it is allocated so if u1 is 0 and come down because this is in the column so we will be able to find v4 okay u is here v is here so in l shape we need to solve it so cost is 26 okay the formula you just have to apply into the formula cost is equal so it's 26 is equal to 0 plus v okay 26 is the cost is equal to u which is 0 v we need to find so when 0 goes to the other side it will still remain 26 so my v4 value is 26 okay now if i have v4 i will be using in the same column where the cost one more there is allocation of 4 where i will be able to find u2 okay i will be able to find the value of u2 so see again here cost is 46 we need to find the value of u v is 26 so plus 26 when goes to the other side will become minus 26 so 46 minus 26 is 20 so my u2 value will be 20 now in the same line i will be since i have the u i will be able to find w1 and w2 ka v's okay so again same thing cost is i mean the cost is 34 so 34 minus 20 i will get the value as 14 36 minus 20 i will get the value as 16 okay now since i have got the 16 now here i can see allocation i'll be able to find u3 so 34 sorry 54 minus 16 is 38 so this will become 38 so basically you just have to minus your cost with those values okay now if this is 38 so 
36 minus 38 will be negative 2. <coughs> okay. So with this, we are able to find the value of u. Uh, I, I need to find. Okay, there was no u three because that's demand. So that's just u. So with that, we were able to find the value of, or uh, in the value of u and v. Now this is for one thing. Now to find the optimality. So once we have found u and v, we need to find the optimality. That is for unmarked cell. So for unmarked cell, I'll write your cell and I'll write, we need to find something called as a change, which is cost minus u plus v. So first check, which are the cell which have not been marked. So this cell is not marked. So that is F1, W1. So I'll write here F1, W1. You're finding the change. So change is equal to cost. Cost is 42 minus u. u was 0 plus v of the same cell is 14. So 42 minus 14 is 28. So I'm writing it here. So now next cell is F1, W2. So F1, W2, ka, the cost is 32 minus u is again 0 and v is 16 so 32 minus 16 is 16 next cell is f1 w3 change is equal to u uh, cost is 50 minus 0 plus negative 2 so minus minus plus so it will become 52 next cell is this one so we have f2 w3 cost is 28 minus u is 20 plus v is negative 2 so it become 18 uh, 18 and 28 so that will become 10 next is f3 w1 the change is 64 minus u was 38 plus 14 so the value that I should get is 12 and last f3 w3 the change is 82 minus 38 plus 26. The value that we should get is 18. Okay. Once we get the change, once we get the all the values of this change, remember, if all the values are positive, meaning your solution is optimal. If it is negative, if any of the value will be negative, then it is not an optimal solution and we will, we will have to make it optimal. Okay. So since here, everything is optimal. The, all the answers are positive, so I'll write since there is no negative change, the solution is optimal. And the moment it is optimal, we need to find the total cost. So, total cost is very simple. The allocation multiplied by the cost, okay? So it will be 6 into 34 plus 3 into 36 plus 4 into 46 plus 11 into 26 plus so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th, uh, 7 into 54 plus 12 into 36. So 6 into 34 is 204 plus 3 into 36 108 plus 4 into 46 uh, is 184 11 into 26 is 286 7 into 54 is 378 plus 12 into 36 is 432 Okay, so we multiplied our final addition. Okay, the final value of our total should be your IBF as the initial feasible is 1592. Okay, so that's our final value. This is how you have to basically solve the sum. Suppose, so this was the very first type of sum where uh, the answer was optimal. Okay, so we had to solve as per Vogel method for testing the optimality. We had to do by Modi method. If we get all the unmarked cell change positive, the solution is optimal. 
Once it is optimal, we can just multiply the allocated value with the cost and we'll get our total cost. So this is how you all had to solve the sum based on VAM method and MODI method under transportation when the sum has, uh, you know, a direct optimal solution. So I hope everyone have understood that. With that, we will be ending this video here. Thank you.